Hello everyone, this is John Hashbatad. Welcome to Physics Simply. In this video, I will be solving some questions uh, in multiple choice about astrophysics or space physics. I placed a link in the description for the PDF file uh, for these questions for you. The first question says, which row in the table correctly uh, lists a galaxy, a planet, and a star? So the Milky Way is a galaxy, the solar system is not a galaxy, it's a, a, a cluster of planets around a star in the middle of the Milky Way. Uh, Mars, Earth, Mars, Earth, all these are planets. Uh, a star is the sun, not the moon. So the answer is B. Second question says the orbit around the sun of a comet is not circular. The distance between the sun and the comet varies as shown in the diagram. Where in the orbit is the speed of the comet the greatest and where is it the smallest? So the comet speeds up as it gets closer to the sun and slows down as it goes away from the sun. So uh, high speed is at R and lowest speed is at P. So greatest speed R, lowest speed P. So the answer is D. The next question says the orbit around the sun of a particular asteroid uh, is not circular. The distance between the sun and the asteroid varies as shown in the diagram. The asteroid possesses both gravitational energy and kinetic energy. So which energy transfer takes place as the asteroid moves from X to Y and from Y to Z? Okay, from X to Y, it's getting closer to the sun, so it's losing GPE. Same as height uh, from the sun decreases, so as height decreases, GPE decreases, and kinetic energy increases. So from GPE to kinetic energy. And from Y to Z, it's also losing height and getting closer to the sun, so it's also losing GPE and gaining kinetic energy. So the answer is A. Question 4 says, Ceres and Vesta are two asteroids or dwarf planets that orbit the sun. The orbits of Ceres and Vesta are approximately circular. The sun's gravitational field at the orbit of Ceres is weaker than that of the orbit of Vesta. So if this is the sun, uh, Ceres is actually further away from the sun since uh, the gravitational field strength of the sun at Ceres is weaker. That means it's further away from the sun and Vesta is closer. How does the orbital speed of Ceres and its orbit period compare with the orbital speed and orbit period of Vesta? So as you get closer to the Sun, the speed of motion increases. So here the speed is uh, higher than at Ceres. And so the periodic time uh, here is less than the periodic time at Ceres. So the orbital speed of Ceres is smaller than that of Vesta because it's further away. And the orbit period of Ceres is greater than uh, of Vesta because it's still also further away from the Sun. So the answer is B. The next question says the Sun emits energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Which three components of the electromagnetic spectrum account for almost all of this energy? So most of the energy emitted from the Sun is in a range of visible light, ultraviolet and Infrared, so it's not microwaves, not microwaves. Infrared, ultraviolet, and visible light, yes. So the answer is C. The next question says, when uh, in the life cycle of a star are heavy elements produced? When a cloud containing hydrogen collapses? No, this is the start of the life cycle. When a protostar becomes stable? No. When a red supergiant explodes? When a white dwarf is formed? Actually, it's C, because as the core collapses, uh, it leaves behind the uh, elements that became fused together, making these heavy elements. Just before the explosion of the supernova, uh, these heavy elements are present, and the supernova pushes it into space. The next question says, the statements J, K, L, and M describe different stages in the life cycle of a star. Uh, a cloud containing hydrogen collapses due to gravitational attraction, a red giant is produced, a white dwarf is produced, hydrogen undergoes nuclear fusion to produce helium. So at first we have the nebula, which is uh, the hydrogen cloud, which then causes uh, the fusion to start by attraction as gravitational pull pulls uh, the atoms more close together. Uh, they gain speed and fusion starts and eventually when the fusion uh, of hydrogen 
ends uh, and the helium uh, fusion starts, a red joint is formed. And when all fusion ends, a white dwarf is formed. This is for a low mass star. So we have J, M, K, then L. So the answer is A. The next question says, what provides evidence for the Big Bang Theory? The expulsion of heavy elements into space during a supernova explosion? No. Uh, the increase in the observed wavelength of radiation emitted by distant galaxies? The increase in wavelength means a lower frequency that is called a red shift. So actually this is the answer. Uh, the nuclear fusion reaction that takes place at the center of a stable star, it's not the evidence for uh, the Big Bang Theory. The smaller orbital speeds of the planets that are further from the Sun, that means that the gravitation pull uh, gets weaker as distance increases. It's not related to the Big Bang Theory, so the answer is B. Here are some other questions from another file. The first question says the diagrams represent the positions of the Earth, the Sun and the Moon at different times of the Moon cycle. Which diagram represents the position of the Moon when a full Moon is seen from the Earth? So for a full Moon, uh, the total surface of uh, the Moon must be illuminated, which means uh, the Earth is actually in between the Moon and the Sun. So the answer is C. So all light coming from the sun, it falls on the surface of the moon and then reflects on the surface of the earth. The next question says, which row correctly describes the nature of Mars and the nature of Saturn? So Mars is uh, from the inner planets, so it's a rocky planet. And Saturn is from the outer planets, which are gas joints, so it's gaseous. So the answer is C. The next question says, which type of force keeps the planets in orbit uh, around the sun it's not electrical it's not friction it is the gravitational force it's not magnetic so the answer is c the next question says which distance is the largest the diameter of neptune's orbit the diameter of the sun it's uh, the diameter of the sun is actually much smaller than the orbit of neptune uh, the distance between the earth and the sun is between uh, these two values the distance between the sun and the next nearest star that's actually much further away than all of these choices this is outside the solar system so this is the largest one another question says which statement is correct a light year is the time it takes for light from the sun to reach the earth uh, no it's not time it is a distance traveled by light in one year uh, b says the planets move around the sun in circular orbit no uh, it is not circular, it's elliptical. The sun consists mostly of helium. No, right now it is uh, mainly hydrogen because it's a stable star at this stage. The sun contains most of the mass of the solar system. This uh, statement is correct, so the answer is D. The next question says the sun emits electromagnetic radiation. The graph shows the energy emitted per second for a range of different wavelengths. So we have most of uh, the radiation is in the middle at Y and the wavelength increases in this direction. So this is short wavelength. This is long wavelength. So uh, the radiation which has the shortest wavelength emitted from the sun with high intensity, it is the ultraviolet. So X is ultraviolet and the middle is visible light. And with the longest wavelength, we have infrared radiation so the answer is c the next question says a distant star explodes uh, as a supernova which statement is not correct the exploding supernova forms a planetary nebula uh, the distant star is large when compared with the sun the supernova releases heavy elements into space the supernova leaves behind a neutron star or a black hole actually the last one is correct uh, this one is also correct a distant star is large when compared with the sun. Yes, because it, it, uh, it causes a supernova. Supernova happens when the mass is much greater than the sun. We, so we are left with A. Technically, a supernova should have a planetary nebula around it. But it forms just before the supernova. And the supernova pushes it outwards into space. The last question says the distant galaxies are moving away from the Earth at very high speeds. Graph P and graph Q show how the speed of these distant galaxies changes as their distance from the Earth increases. 
So according to Hubble's law, speed is equal to the Hubble constant multiplied by distance. So it's a straight line through the origin since it's a direct relation between speed and distance or relative speed and relative distance. In which row are uh, statements about the Hubble constant and about the age of the universe correct? So uh, the choices contain gradients and area under graph. So the gradient of the first graph P is equal to speed divided by distance, which is equal to the Hubble constant from this equation. The gradient here is equal to distance over speed. So it's equal to one over the Hubble constant. So uh, these have opposite gradients. So how can we calculate the Hubble constant is a gradient of P not Q so it's either A or B and uh, the age of the universe the age of the universe can be calculated using the equation 1 over the Hubble constant this is how you calculate the age of the universe in seconds so this is actually the gradient of the graph Q not the area under the graph Q so the answer is B okay this was the end of the video I hope you found this video useful to you uh, for the exam today, I wish you all the best and I hope you all do well in paper 2.